Welcome to another edition of the Nightly Nugent. Ted, I want to continue the sombering topic of the destruction of America, something you raised at the tail end of last night's Nightly Nuge, which I'm calling the poisoning of America. I'm going to give you some examples. Um, the pink slime that's going into ground beef in America, um, which they're coating with ammonia so they can poison America. You talked about it yesterday with all the sugar content that everybody's looked the other way in American foods, all the other carcinogenics that are in not only foods, but other items that are in our home. And I'd be amiss if I didn't mention the destruction of the food processing plants that are going on rampant in America. So what's your take on the poisoning of America and who's behind it and who gains from it? Well, remember, America was founded by a bunch of defiant, critical thinking, free men where they told King George to kiss our flame throwing free ass. The bottom line with all the topics that we discuss here on the Nightly News and I cover every week on my Real America Voice Spirit Campfire. And again, Shemaine does such an incredible job on her Real America Voice Faith and Freedom is that now is the time to stand up and think. And that's why I've always celebrated venison because when it comes to the FDA and the USDA, the Nugent family will not comply. You can get this I will not comply flag at tednugent.com. You might want to raise your freak flag high. The FDA is in cahoots with the Communist Chinese along with Big Pharma where the Food and Drug Administration is authorizing absolute proven poison in our food and drugs. The United States Department of Agriculture, if you want one of the tens of millions of foodborne diseases and illnesses in America, make sure your food has a USDA stamp on it because the USDA bureaucrats are in cahoots with the communist Chinese who provide our seed, our fertilizer and the Roundup ready scourge in America. Stop and think about it. All your food has proven carcinogenic roundup ready chemical warfare in the seed and the fertilizer you can't buy a loaf of bread in america unless you go to a, the amish or the here in uh waco texas the homestead and there's another great natural product called field of greens where these people are conscientious about what goes into our sacred temple so we can improvise adapt and overcome the atrocities the the pure evil of the government bureaucracies that are intentionally poisoning our children and our food and you need to hunt fish and trap more often even though if your if your fish are downstream from I don't know, East Palestine, Ohio, you might want to reconsider. I'm telling you, Keith, there is chemical warfare being waged on the United States of American consumers because our government is in bed with the communist Chinese. Solwell, of course, is in bed with the communist Chinese. So we need to make a stand. Well, they always say proof is in the pudding. Well, that's a very apropos saying for these stats. Back in 1970, Ted, about 15% of America was considered obese. Now, 70%, nearly 70% of America is overweight and nearly 40% would be categorized as obese. One time I was at the shopping mall with my wife and I took a picture and sent it to you of the new Victoria's Secret models on the wall, all 200 bills or more. It is what it is. It used to be we celebrated people in shape. Now we not only encourage it, but listening to you, Ted, we're engineering it. Last word on this poisoning of America topic. Well, again, Shemaine and I hate to leave Spirit Wild Ranch or our sacred swamps in Michigan, but when we do go out, we have a lot of friends. Our family are all fit, athletic. All my sons and daughters and my grandkids, they're all athletic. My band, my crew, my everybody I hunt with. We have some fatzos, but we make sure that we give them loving advice to maybe get a decent and responsible diet. But when I, when I go out in public, I want to call my Japanese friends and tell them to bring their harpoons because there's pods of sperm whales running a muck people that have more blubber than the muck tuck in the arctic it is absolutely embarrassing and if you want to give a finger to god then mistreat your sacred temple and cultivate blubber blubber is supposed to be on walruses and whales 
not on people. So when you get out of the shower next time, you got to lift up slabs to wipe the interior. You're pissing in God's face. You should be ashamed of yourself. Am I, what do they call that, body shaming or whatever it's called? You're damn right I am because when if one of my family members started producing blubber because I love them, this is actual love. Because I love people, I'm saying you need to change your life if you've got blubber. It's embarrassing and it's evil and it's sick. It's unhealthy and it's ir- it's, it's literally telling God to kiss your ass because you don't care about your gift of life. You're going to poison it anyway. That's harsh stuff. And I'm sure this will go all over the internet that Nugent's a body shamer and a hateful man. I'm not a hateful man. I'm a loving man. People who have blubber are haters. They hate their gift of life from God, so they abuse it. I want to tie that exact comment, Ted, back to something we talked about earlier this week. Could you imagine with America now being 70% overweight, how the invasion of Normandy would have gone? And when you think about this, it used to be our law enforcement and our firefighters were in tip top shape. Now we include gender uh, equity things in the requirements. Um, Now you don't even have to be a U.S. citizen and it's okay to be a 300 pounder and be a law enforcement officer, a first responder or in our U.S. military. Final, final word. Law enforcement and military should be should be limited and restricted to warriors. And if you can't do a push up, you can't be a cop or a military. If you can't if you can't run and chase down a bad guy, you can't be a cop and you can't be a military hero. These are tragic, tragic times in America, but we the people must speak up. Am I, am I saying that we should discriminate against fat people? <clears throat> what I'm saying is that we should select meritocracy. We should select capabilities. We should yes. judge by content of character and the capabilities of athletic efficiency when it comes to someone who's got to carry a hose up a ladder to stop a fire. If you're too fat to climb a ladder carrying a hose to save lives, you can't be a fireman. Well, tomorrow night, Ted, I want to talk about, uh, it's our Friday free-for-all, of course, tomorrow night, but the destruction of America can happen one good person at a time. Somebody who speaks up, oftentimes that herd bull gets tried to cut out of the herd Well, they're trying to do it to Ted Nugent. I want to talk about a concert that got canceled and the personal experience you had this weekend at a guitar show down in Texas. Tomorrow night right here on The Nightly Nugent. 